Sergeant Lugo, to start your recording, please. PC recording good. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing on the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. At this time, would Council staff please turn on their video. Please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. That is land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Councilmember Francisco Moya, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm joined remotely today by Council Members Levin, uh, Barry G., uh, Rivera, and Borelli. Today, we will vote on items heard by the subcommittee on our April 5th meeting, including a pre-considered LU uh, for the Bedford Avenue rezoning, a pre-considered LU for the citywide zoning for coastal flood resiliency proposal, and the pre-considered LUs for three separate resilient uh, neighborhood proposals, uh, including uh, Garrison Beach, uh, Sheepshead Bay, and Old Howard Beach. Uh, we will also hold public hearings on proposals for the 431 Concord Avenue rezoning, 86 Fleet Place text amendments, and the 68-19 Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning. Today we will vote to approve a pre-considered LU under ULURP number C210043 ZMK for the 135-137 Bedford Avenue rezoning proposal relating to property in Council Member 11's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to establish a C14 overlay uh, district in existing R6A and R6B districts on the east side of Bedford Avenue between North 9th and North 10th Streets. The proposed action would match an existing commercial overlay district across the street and facilitate a new mixed use development with ground floor commercial use and residential units on the upper floors. Council Member Levin is in support of the proposal. We will also vote to approve three separate but related proposals by the Department of City Planning under the Resilient Neighborhoods uh, Initiative. These proposals are all intended to facilitate resilient development in areas vulnerable to flooding. We will vote to approve pre-considered LUs under C210130 ZMK and N210131 uh, ZRK for the Gardson Beach uh, Resilient Neighborhoods proposal relating to property in Councilmember Mizell's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning, uh, a zoning map amendment to change existing R4, C3, and C22 districts to R1, C3A, and C23 districts, and a related zoning text amendment to establish a new special coastal risk district. Councilmember Mizell is in support of the proposal. We will also vote uh, a pre-considered LU under N210132 ZRK for the Sheepheads Bay Resilient Neighborhood proposal relating to property in Councilmember Deutsch's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning text amendment to align existing regulations of the special Sheepshead Bay District with flood resilient buildings and design standards. Council Member Deutsch is in support of the proposal. We will vote to approve a pre-considered LU under C210133 ZMQ for the Old Howard Beach Resilient Neighborhoods proposal relating to property in Council Member Ulrich's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to replace an existing R31 and R32 district with R3X and R31 districts uh, to more closely match the existing build context. Uh, Council Member Ulrich is in support of the proposal, and we will vote to approve with modifications the pre-considered LU for the Department of City Planning's Zoning for Coastal Flood Resiliency proposal under ULURPS number N210095ZRY. This is a citywide zoning text amendment to update temporary provisions adopted on an emergency basis after Hurricane Sandy and is intended to facilitate flood resilient design measures to provide better protection from flood risks in vulnerable areas, support public access to waterfront sites through resilient open uh, space design and help New Yorkers recover quickly from our future disasters. Uh, our modification will include clarifications around applicability of the proposed uh, floodplain regulations as well as clarifications to certain bulk regulations, including changes to uh, address community feedback regarding uh, floor area as well as to permit obstruction 
obstruction rules for buildings and spaces accommodating new accessory um, mechanical equipment. Um, I now would like to take this opportunity to um, allow any of the council members uh, who are present that would like to uh, speak on any of one of the rezonings, if there are any. Sure, I see no members with uh, hands raised at the moment. Okay. Uh, and before I call a vote, I'd like to also acknowledge that we have been joined by uh, Council Member Ayala. Uh, and now I, I now call for a vote to approve the pre-considered LUs relating to the Bedford Avenue rezoning proposals and the resilient neighborhoods proposal for uh, Gertson Beach, uh, Sheepshead Bay, and Old Howard Beach, and to approve with modifications. Uh, I've described the pre-considered LU for the zoning for coastal flood resiliency proposal. Uh, Council, can you please call the roll? Chair Moya. I vote aye. Council member Levin. I vote aye. Council member Grodenchik. Aye. Council member Ayala. I vote aye. Council member Rivera. I vote aye. Council member Borelli. I vote aye, thank you. Chair, the vote is currently six in the affirmative, uh, zero in the negative and no abstentions. The vote will remain open uh, as we wait for uh, Council member Reynoso. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> before we turn our hearings, I will first uh, like to recognize our subcommittee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearings. If you wish to testify and have not already registered, we ask that you please do so now by visiting the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc.gov to sign up. Members of the public may also view a live stream broadcast of this meeting at the council's website. As a technical note, for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of any presentation shown today, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted until recognized by the chair to speak. Applicant teams will be recognized first. Uh, members of the public will be called and recognized in panels in groups of up to four names at a time. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that your microphone is on before you begin speaking as there is a slight delay in the process of unmuting. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written testimony, you wish to submit instead of appearing before the subcommittee, you may email it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear either at the bottom of your participant panel or at the bottom of your primary viewing window. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands and Chair Moya will recognize members to speak. Witnesses are requested to remain in the meeting until excused by the chair as council members may have questions. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this meeting for various technical reasons. And we ask that you please be patient as we work through any issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Arthur. I now open the public hearing on pre-considered LU items under ULERP numbers C200274 ZMX and N00275 ZRX for the 
431 uh, Concord Avenue rezoning proposal uh, requesting a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment relating to property in council member Ayala's district in the Bronx. Uh, I will remind the viewing public for anyone wishing to testify on this item. If you have not already done so, you may register online in advance and you may do that now by visiting the council's website. Um, and now I would like to take this opportunity to uh, recognize council member uh, Ayala for some remarks. Do we have council member Ayala? Councilmember Member Ayala is here. We may just be having a technical issue. I know she's in a remote location. Okay, let's give her a minute. Council Member Ayala, if you can hear us, uh, there is a request for you to unmute, I believe, on your device. Okay. Sorry, I'm muted. I was on a, an emergency call. No worries. I didn't hear what you were calling me about. <laughs> no, no worries, Councilwoman. Uh, we are about to go into the uh, rezoning proposal in your district, and uh, I was uh, seeing if you wanted to give any opening remarks. If not, uh, we can. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't prepare any remarks other than, you know, what I will share is that I am in support of this project. The, the property is now dilapidated, um, underutilized space. Um, that's really just, you know, hasn't brought any real benefit to the community. So the redevelopment, um, you know, of the lot in and of itself is a huge win for the community. The fact that this is going to um, bring in you know, uh, truly affordable housing is also a big win. So I wanted to thank the developers um, for working with us on this project. Um, it's, we've been working on it for about a year and a half now um, and COVID kind of threw a little wrench in, in the plans to, to do it sooner. Um, but I'm excited to, you know, that we're finally at this stage and, and excited for you all to hear um, what the project looks like as well. My apologies Great. for that. Great, thank you, Council Member Ayala. Uh, and now, Council, if you can please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel uh, for this item includes Frank St. Jacques, Land Use Council for the applicant. Mr. St. Jacques, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak. Great, thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and begin my presentation. We will, uh, oh. And second, Sorry. excuse me, we'll, we'll Frank. swear you went yeah. first. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, please, Council, if you can please uh, administer the affirmation. Uh, Mr. St. Jacques, please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee in advance to all council member questions? I do. Thank you. Uh, we are in receipt of your uh, slideshow presentation for this proposal. When you are ready to present the slideshow, please say so, and it will be uh, displayed on the screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides. As a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to testimony at council.nyc.gov. Uh, and now if the panelists would please uh, restate your name, organization for the record, uh, you may begin. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chair Moya and members of the subcommittee. My name is Frank St. Jacques. I'm with Ackerman LLP. We're a land use council uh, representing the applicant. Um, if you could go ahead and, and load the slideshow, I'm, I'm happy to begin the presentation. Great, thank you. Next slide, please. 
Uh, we are here to present an application for a zoning map amendment to change an existing M12 zoning district to an R7D zoning district and a zoning text amendment to establish the mandatory inclusionary housing program or MIH within the rezoning area. Uh, these actions would facilitate the redevelopment of an underutilized site with an 11 story residential building with 88 units that would be developed with HPD's extremely low and low income affordability or ELA program subject to HPD approval. Next slide, please. The rezoning area is located at the edge of an M12 zoning district that was mapped in 1964, and the rezoning area is within the transit zone. Next slide, please. The rezoning area is shaded red in this slide, which shows the surrounding built context. It is located at the corner of Concord Avenue and East 145th Street. St. Mary's Park is shown on the left-hand side of the slide. And the sixth train is a few blocks away at the East 143rd Street station at Southern Boulevard on the right-hand side of the slide. The BX19, excuse me, BX17, 19, and 33 bus lines also serve the area. Next slide, please. Land uses in the surrounding area as shown in this map. Uh, industrial use shown in purple is concentrated south of the rezoning area in M12 and M13 districts and in the IBZ located south of East 144th Street. Uh, north of East 144th Street near the rezoning area, there's some non-conforming residential use shown in yellow and orange in the M12 zoning district, as well as a few non-conforming industrial uses further north in the R71 residential district. Next slide, please. The rezoning area consists of the northeastern portion of the block, including three contiguous tax lots. The development site is approximately 13,750 square feet and has about a 125 feet of frontage on Concord Avenue. Next slide, please. The proposed rezoning would change the red shaded portion of the zoning map from M12 to R7D. And the proposed rezoning would allow for the production of new housing within Bronx Community District 1, which is not currently permitted in the existing M12 zoning district. This zoning change is appropriate because the rezoning area is located at the edge of the M12, excuse me, the edge of the M12 zoning district adjacent to an R71 residential district, which has comparable bulk provisions to the proposed R7D. It's also in close proximity to public transportation and within walking distance to St. Mary's Park. Next slide, please. The proposed rezoning would facilitate the development of an 11 story quality housing residential building with approximately 88 units. Uh, it would rise to 11 stories after, and after 15 foot setbacks on uh, above a nine story base. Next slide, please. Here's some uh, illustrative massings showing the design which incorporates different facade materials. Uh, and outdoor space would be provided um, via balconies and as well as a 2,500 square foot recreation area on the roof. Next slide, please. Here's street view showing the improved streetscape with the proposed development. Next slide, please. And this is the final slide. Um, the applicant is seeking to develop the building with HPD's ELLA term sheet. Subject to HPD approval, half of the 88 units or 44 would be affordable at less than 50% of the area median income. The remaining half or the remaining 44 would be affordable at less than 80% AMI. Uh, we note that there's a 15% set aside for formerly homeless households. And the ELLA term sheet requires that uh, when developed under MIH, the number of permanently affordable units would be increased by 15% or here 13 units uh, reaching a total of 35 permanently affordable units. Um, that concludes my presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions before uh, I turn it over to Council Member Ayala. Um, I, I know that uh, the Bronx Community Board, one, uh, didn't approve this application. Can you speak to the work that your team has done uh, since then to engage the community support on this project and address uh, some of the concerns that uh, were raised by CB1? Sure. I, I think really one of the main concerns was the, um, the condition of, of the site when we initially met with the community board. 
uh, in fall of last year. Um, you know, before that time, and, and then in particular since that time, um, the uh, applicant owner of the site has um, arranged for uh, several times a week, um, someone coming out to, to maintain the site, to make sure um, that there's no debris, uh, to, to clean the site. Um, the uh, owner has also sought um, uh, permits to demolish the site in anticipation of, of the development um, there's a dilapidated structure there that's that's caused some problems. Um, there's been a fire, um, so we're seeking to have that that demolished and um, in preparation for uh, the proposed development. Okay, uh, and over the course of planning for this project, the number of anticipated units uh, had decreased from 92 units to 88. Can you speak to why that is, and is that due to the increase in two bedroom, three bedroom units in this project? That, that's correct. Um, when we had met with the uh, borough president's office, um, uh, there was a request that the number of two and three bedroom units be increased. Um, that uh, in order to increase the number of two and three uh, bedroom units, there was a decrease in studios and ones. Um, so the overall unit count uh, went from I believe 92 units uh, to the current 88 units. Okay. Uh so wait, can you say that again? How many two to three bedroom units are planned for the project? Um, there are currently, one moment. Yep. So um, the, there are 28 two bedrooms proposed and 10 three bedrooms proposed um, with the, the um, the change from from the as initially filed with 92 units to to get to 88, uh, we removed four studios and removed four one bedrooms um, and added uh, five two bedrooms uh, to arrive at the, the current um, unit distribution. Got it. Okay, thank you. And you had indicated plans to develop in the in the beginning of your presentation. You had uh, indicated plans to develop the site under HPD, the ELLA program. Uh, can you provide a sense of where this project stands in the pre-development process? Sure. Um, so the initial intake form has been uh, uh, submitted to HPD, um, and HPD has has uh, provided comments on the initial intake form. Um, and we're currently in the process of responding to those comments uh, in order to, to move forward with the project. And when do you expect uh, to close on the HPD financing? Uh, that, that I actually don't know offhand, uh, but I can discuss that with, uh, with the project team and our affordable housing consultant um, and potentially with HPD uh, and provide that information after the hearing if possible. And, and, and maybe you can find out as well of when you expect to secure all agency approvals needed to begin construction on this development? I, I'd be happy to, to find out that information and provide it uh, to your office. Okay, great. Um, and uh, last question before I turn it over to Council um, Member Ayala. Has a general contractor been selected for this project? Uh, not as of yet. Okay. Uh, and. When you do, can you speak to whatever efforts will be made to uh, hire locally on the construction projects and what efforts will be made to hire MWBE firms on the construction of this project? I'd be happy to. Um, I'll, I'll note that the, the developer um, is a, a local Bronx developer. Um, they've, uh, and they've also developed some, some uh, buildings within Brooklyn, um, but that's you know, typically their, their process is to, is to work locally. Um, but I can provide more detail in, in writing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, that's it for me. Um, Council Member Ayala, uh, if you have any questions. We'll turn it over to you. Sorry, I'm having difficulty unmuting this morning. Um, I don't have any questions. I think that, you know, in regards to the um, the objections raised by the community board, um you know they're 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 heard and, and and understood but i think that you know the property had been sitting there uh vacant for quite some time before this developer purchased it um prior to covid and you know unfortunately because it was sitting there you know uh empty for for quite some time is a is a house a one-story i think one-story two-story uh house um uh property 
then we did see some squatting in you know in the building that uh, contributed to um, two fires. Um, and I think that all of that will be remediated through this development and um, you know really pleased with you know the outcome, um, the ensuring that all of the units are under 80% of the AMI and the 50% are reserved um, for under 50 is really a, a huge win for this part of the, of, of the district um, where you know, we're still known as, as, as being a part of the poorest congressional district and we want to make sure that we're developing in a smart, efficient way that doesn't further, you know, contribute to the displacement of South Bronx residents. So I am, you know, really uh, pleased with the outcome thus far and uh, appreciate your time um, this morning. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Thank you, Council um, Woman Ayala. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I now invite any of my colleagues who have questions uh, for this panel. Uh, council, do you have any council members that have questions? Mr. Chair, I see no members with questions at this time. Okay. There being no further questions, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the Concord Avenue rezoning application? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the Concord Avenue rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now. And uh, Chair Moya, the meeting will stand at ease briefly while we check for any newly registered members of the public. Uh, okay, Chair Moya, I see no other members, uh, no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Uh, there being no members of the public who wish to testify on the pre-considered LU items under L, uh, under ULURP number C200274ZMX and N00275ZRX for the Concord Avenue rezoning proposal, the public hearing is now closed and the items are laid over. Uh, I now open the public hearing on the pre-considered LU item under ULURP number N210061ZRK for the 86 Fleet Place proposal seeking a zoning text amendment relating to property in Majority Leader Cumbo's district in Brooklyn. As a general reminder to the public, if you wish to testify in this meeting, please visit the Council's website now to complete the online registration process, or you may also submit written testimony to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Um, now, Council, if you can please call up the first panel for this item. The applicant panel for this item will include Rachel Skall, Land Use Counsel for the Applicant, and Ralph Zarinski uh, on behalf of the applicant. Panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak. Thank you. And counsel, if you could please um, administer the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? I do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are in receipt of your slideshow presentation for this proposal. When you are ready to present the slideshow, please say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing um, once uh, advancing of slides, once again, anyone who requires an accessible version of this presentation uh, may send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now if the panelists would please uh, restate your names and organizations for the record, you may begin. Good morning, my name is Rachel Skull. I'm associate at Greenberg Charter. Um, Ralph, do you wanna go ahead and state your name? 
Hi, uh, Ralph Sarinsky, Red Apple Real Estate. Sorry, my video's getting an error message. Thanks. Um, if whoever's controlling the slides could pull those up, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so I'm with Greenberg Chart. We represent Red Apple Fleet, 86 Fleet Place Development LLC in this application to amend the special downtown Brooklyn district's retail continuity requirements. Next slide, please. Um, and I'm joined today by Ralph on behalf of Red Apple. Red Apple owns 86 Fleet Place at the southwest corner of Myrtle Avenue and Fleet Place in a C64 zoning district in the special downtown Brooklyn district. Next slide, please. You see the property there in red. Next slide, please. The property is improved with a 32 story building that was completed in 2017. The building's ground floor within 50 feet of Myrtle Avenue is subject to the special district's retail continuity restrictions which requires such space be used for limited, generally commercial uses. Next slide, please. The building's ground floor con contains approximately 10,000 square feet of space that has been reserved for retail use. The applicant has been marketing this space for use by up to four commercial tenants since 2016. Despite those efforts, the space remains empty. Within the past year or so, dating back to before the pandemic, the applicant was approached by daycare and medical tenants interested in the space, leading us to this application, which would amend the zoning resolution to allow all non-residential uses permitted by the site's underlying C64 zoning district on the building's ground floor. Next slide, please. So this is the existing retail continuity map for uh, downtown Brooklyn. In 2018, the council approved a similar application to allow non-residential uses on the ground floors of three Red Apple buildings on the block east of 86 Fleet Place, where you see that non-residential requirement there on the map. Uh, that application resulted in three community facility tenants in those buildings, a daycare and dialysis, dialysis center, each run by local not-for-profits, and an urgent care clinic. Like the buildings to the east, 86 Fleet Place has no frontage on Flatbush Avenue extension and is located across Myrtle Avenue from Ingersoll Houses, lending the area more residential character than locations at the, sound, the center of downtown Brooklyn. These characteristics make the property more suitable for a tenant, such as a community facility tenant, that would benefit local residents. Next slide, please. So this is the proposed map. We would extend that non-residential requirement to the west to cover the frontage of the 86 Fleet Place property. Next slide, please. And we are proposing to amend the, the text of the section to match, uh, match the changes to the map. Um, the community board and the borough president both issued favorable recommendations for this application. Um, and that is the presentation and Ralph and I are happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions. Back in uh, 2018, the council approved this uh, same uh, zoning change uh, that allowed the option for a sitting community facilities uh, in the ground floor spaces for the rest of the block on Myrtle Avenue between Fleet Place and Ashland Place. Why was uh, 86 Fleet not included in that original uh, application? Sure, so I can let Ralph speak to this in a little bit more detail, but I think that Red Apple had a little bit higher hopes for the commercial viability of this building. Um, Ralph, do you wanna add some color to that? Yeah, it, when we did the first one, um, you know, we kept it to the low rise buildings. We thought we had, you know, decent chance of marketing to, you know, pure retail tenancies at 86 Fleet Place, given that it was somewhat closer to Flatbush Avenue and in the base of a bigger tower. But unfortunately, the, you know, the typical retail tenant never materialized uh, for that project either. Okay. Uh, and how is this block different from the rest of downtown Brooklyn where storefront retail is required? And why is this particular block uh, appropriate for allowing community facilities? Sure. So this part of downtown Brooklyn sort of juts out to the east from the more central part of downtown Brooklyn. Um, being across Flatbush Avenue extension lends it a somewhat different character because there's already so much residential and purely residential use in the neighborhood with the NYCHA developments um, across Myrtle Avenue. And so what we've seen is that in this area, the character really does change from Flatbush Avenue extension heading east. It lends it a more residential character. And so there's been this desire for community facility tenants in the area because there are so many residents nearby who would use these services. Okay, and uh, do you have a community facility tenant identified yet? 
Um, Ralph, would you like to speak to us? Uh, yes, we do. We have a local not-for-profit um, medical use um, that we you know whose lease is really contingent upon, you know, obviously community facility uses being allowed in this property. Okay, thank you. That's uh, that's it for me. Um, I now will check with our council to see if there's any council members that have any questions for this panel. No, Chair, I see no members with questions for this panel. Okay. There being uh, no further questions, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 86 Fleet Place uh, proposal? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the 86 Fleet Place proposal, please press the raise hand button now uh, and the meeting will stand at ease while we check for any other uh, members of the public who may have registered. Sorry, Chair Moya, I see no members of the public who wish to testify on the 86 Fleet Place proposal. Uh, thank you, Arthur. There being no members of the public who wish to testify on the pre-considered LU item under ULERP number N210061ZRK for the 86 Fleet Place proposal, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. Uh, I now open the public hearing on pre-considered LU items under ULERP numbers uh, C200272 ZMQ and N200273 ZRQ for the 68 19 Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning proposal, which seeks a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment, uh, and which relates to property in Councilmember Kozlowitz's district in Queens. Uh, I will remind the viewing public for anyone wishing to testify on this item. If you have not already done so, you may register online in advance and you may do that now by visiting the council's website. Uh, council, if you can please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel for this item will once again be Frank St. Jacques, land use uh, council for the applicant. Mr. St. Jacques, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request uh, in order to begin to speak. Great, thank you. And council, if you could administer the affirmation. Panelists, uh, please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in answer to all council member questions? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are in receipt of your slideshow presentation for this proposal. When you are ready to present the slideshow, please say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides. Once again, anyone who requires an accessible version, version of this presentation may send an email request to testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now if the panelist uh, would restate your name and organization for the record, uh, you may begin. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chair Moya uh, and subcommittee members. Uh, again, I'm Frank St. Jacques of Ackerman LLP representing the applicant. Um, I am ready to, to begin my presentation at you wouldn't mind lighting, excuse me, loading the slideshow. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, this application is for a zoning map amendment to change existing C81 and R4 zoning districts 
to an R6A and R6A C23 zoning district, uh, as well as a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area or MIH area within the rezoning area. These actions would facilitate the development of a seven story mixed use building with 87 units, uh, approximately 26 of which would be permanently income restricted under the mandatory inclusionary housing program. Next slide, please. The rezoning area shown here uh, shaded in red in the inset uh, was mapped in 1961 with the current auto-oriented C81 district on the uh, western side and low density non excuse me, low density non-contextual R4 residential district on the eastern side. Next slide, please. The rezoning area includes the approximately 26,000 square foot development site uh, outlined in red and the adjacent site to the east, which is improved with a six story and basement, 69 and a half foot tall residential building that is non-compliant in the R4 zoning district that is mapped on that portion of the rezoning area. You can see two other similar six story and basement multifamily buildings to the south and southeast of the development site uh, shown in um, along uh, Yellowstone Boulevard. Uh, Woodhaven Boulevard bounding the development site to the west is a wide street. St. John's Cemetery is located across Woodhaven Avenue further to the west, and several bus lines are available in the area providing connections to subway and Long Island Railroad service. Next slide, please. The proposed R6A with a C23 commercial overlay and R6A districts would be mapped along the 68th, along 68th Road between Woodhaven Boulevard to the west and Alderton Avenue to the east, as shown in this uh, zoning change map. Next slide, please. The proposed development is a new seven-story mixed-use building with 87 units. The applicant agreed with Community Board 6's request to lower the building height to seven stories from eight stories and provide lower levels of affordability for the project under MIH by providing two of the three MIH income bands at 60% AMI, uh, in addition to uh, several construction protections um, that were requested by the Community Board. This results in 17 of the 26 units uh, being uh, 17 of the 26 MIH units being affordable at 60% AMI. The proposed increase in density is appropriate at this location because of the existing built context, its location on a wide street across from a, and it's, excuse me, its location on a wide street across from a significant open space resource and its proximity to public transit. Next slide, please. The proposed development at seven stories or 73 feet, eight and a half inches, lines up with the adjacent multifamily building height, which is 69 and a half feet tall, as you can see in, in these renderings. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, the mandatory inclusionary housing program requires a set aside for permanently income restricted housing. As we've discussed, um, this would result in 26 permanently affordable units. Um, the applicant team is partnering with HANEC to be the project's nonprofit MIH administering agent. And this slide shows some of the services that, that HANEC would provide uh, in association with this project uh, pursuant to the MIH program. That concludes my presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, I just have uh, one quick question uh, here. Uh, could you just please uh, confirm uh, your commitment to reserve uh, two thirds of the MIH units to families making 60% uh, AMI or less? Yes, we, we um, reconfirmed that commitment. Um, this was uh, a commitment that was made in writing to uh, the community board and, and um, you know, we, we reaffirmed that commitment. Okay. And what is the, the total number of units uh, that will be serving those families? Um, so the total number of um, income restricted units within the project under um, this modified MIH option two is 26. 26, okay, thank you. That's it, that's it for me. Um, council, is there any council members who have any questions for this panel? 
No chair, I see no members with uh, questions for this panel. Okay. There being no further questions, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning application? Uh, if there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the 6819 Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now. Meeting, uh, Chair, the meeting will uh, stand at ease while we check for any additional members of the public who may have registered to testify. Chair Moy, I see no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you. Um, there being no members of the public who wish to testify on the pre-considered LU items under ULIP numbers C200272 ZMQ and N200273 ZRQ for the 68-19 Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning proposal. The public hearing is now closed and the items are laid over. Uh, before we conclude today's business, uh, I'd like to go back to our council to uh, close out the vote. Thank you, Chair Moya. Uh, by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the items are approved and referred to the full language committee. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, that concludes today's business. Uh, I will remind the viewing public that for anyone wishing to submit written testimony for items that were heard today, please send it by uh, email to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Uh, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, uh, the subcommittee council, land use, and other council staff, and of course, the Sergeant at Arms for participating in today's meeting. Uh, this